Uh, if I could pick one for each department, so the best shoe for your day. So shoe comparison we've got for you guys today, we've got a bit of a super trainer battle here. We've got the Adidas Boston 12 up against the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Flash 2. So we're gonna talk about uh, their similarities, their differences, uh, and their key performance features. And hopefully from that, that's gonna give you a great indication of which shoe is right for you. Uh, but before we get into it, I'll give the running company at Geelong a shout out for hooking me up with these shoes. And also, if you want to support this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. All right, so checking out our quick specs, and what's jumping out at me here is firstly the price. So uh, in Australia, $40 more expensive for the Mizuno. Is its performance uh, $40 worth more than the 12? I don't really know. Uh, also, what you're going to notice, the weight as well. So the Mizuno is a fair bit lighter than the Boston 12, but I can tell you from running in them both, they actually don't feel that much different. So the Mizuno still does feel light, but it doesn't feel that much lighter uh, than the Boston, and it's probably got to do with the weight balance of these shoes. And also uh, in the stack heights there and the drop, uh, standing around in these shoes, the flash actually feels like it has got the higher stack and that's just because it's got that crazy, crazy geometry. Uh, the Boston actually feels like its stack is quite a bit lower than that. Uh, and in our uppers here, so Boston 12, so it is in the Addy Zero series, so it's got a similar style to all Adidas's other shoes uh, in that series, but it's a recycled uh, engineered mesh here. Now the material itself, it's quite stiff. I find that all in all the Adidas shoes, it's quite stiff and breathability though is excellent. Pretty reinforced toe cap here. Uh, heel counter, pretty rigid, pretty rigid and it's unforgiving. So there's not too much padding in the back here, just these two heel pads. Got a bit of a, a flap or a, 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 help, a heel tap here to help get your foot in the shoe. Uh, the tongue is super thin made out of like a felt type material, no padding on the tongue and it is not gusseted. Uh, they've got a midfoot strap through the middle of the shoe there and they've got some lace loops here and really thin laces that I find a bit fiddly and I just don't get along with these Adidas laces. Uh, lockdown, it could be better but it's not okay. I don't have any major heel slippage issues. I just don't feel fully locked in with this shoe. Uh, now the fit, this is where I get in most of the trouble with this shoe. So this is the second Boston 12 that I've ordered. The first pair were, were a whole size too big. I had to come a full size down. So uh, I'm a little bit all over the place with the Adidas sizing. I'm not sure if it's very different in their other models, but the Prime X2 for me is true to size. The Pro 2 is probably about half a size, sorry, the Pro 3 is about half a size too big. And the Boston 12 is a full size too big. So uh, if you're looking at buying the Boston 12, it's definitely best to get into a, a, your local store and actually try this one on. And in the Flash 2, so what we're gonna find here, again, engineered mesh. So really light and breathable engineered mesh. This is a really breathable shoe. So great for these hot summer conditions over here. Padding though, hardly any padding on this shoe. A little bit around the heel counter here. Uh, heel counter, pretty structured. Uh, we don't have a heel tab or a heel flare or anything like that. The tongue, very thin, so paper thin tongue, and it again, it is not gusseted, so it can be a little bit fiddly to get flat on the foot. We've got some standard or some ribbon type lacing systems, and the lacing system itself is just pretty standard. Uh, now lockdown in this shoe is pretty good because the overall fit of the shoe for me is a snug fit. So what do I mean by that? It's quite, it wraps around the foot quite tightly. However, I find the length true to size. So if you're, have you got a bit of a wide foot, you may need to size up in this shoe. However, then the length may be a bit too long. So it's a bit of a tricky one, but hopefully uh, if you can get the fit right again in this one like you can in that one, it's best to go try this one on in the store. Uh, issues that I've had with the upper in the Mizuno is uh, I've getting some ir I've had irritation up here, uh, right up the top. It just it just pushes on the Achilles enough, and it gives me some bad blisters. And in our midsole here, so both dual density midsoles. So both these shoes are using their premium brands uh, Super Foam. So in the Boston 12, they use their Light Strike Pro. So as you can see there, that's in the top layer. We've got Light Strike Pro. Uh, under that, they've got their uh, 
energy rods. Now these energy rods aren't carbon fiber, they're glass fiber energy rods. So they're giving the shoe a little bit of rigidity. And under that, they have just got Light Strike 2.0. I think that's like their EVA uh, blend underneath that. But the flexibility of this shoe, it's still, even though it's got those energy rods in it, it's still quite flexible, as you can see there. It's not real loose, but yeah, it's still some rigidity there, and it's got a bit of snap. Now, geometry-wise, we've got a little bit of a four-foot rocky. I would say that this shoe is more... Uh, close to a traditional type uh, geometry in a shoe. Definitely not an overly aggressive rocker in this one. Uh, and in the flash too, so what we got here, top layer is, as I said before, Mizuno Energy Light Plus. So that is their premium race, uh, their premium super foam. Under that, they have their, got their wave plate, but this, again, not a, not a carbon fiber plate, it's a carbon infused wave plate. Uh, and under that, they have just got their Energy, so their EVA blend foam. Now, rigidity in this shoe, if you can remember what the Boston was, this shoe is probably a little bit more rigid than the Boston, but there's still flexibility there. So there's still flexibility, but the Boston is probably the more flexible shoe. And in our geometry, so this is where this shoe gets a little wacky. So this shoe has got a pretty aggressive forefoot rocker here and a pretty aggressive heel bevel. So the main part of the midsole here is right in the middle of the shoe. And in our outsole here, so as always, Adidas are using their Continental Rubber. So on the Boston 12, we have got lots of rubber coverage over the shoe. So there's not too much exposed foam here, as you can see. But this Continental is really nice, really durable, uh, very, very good grip. Uh, you can just, and you've got a little window there where you can see those exposed carbon rods and the super foam. However, there's not too much wrong with this outsole. It performs really well. Uh, and in the Flash 2, so they are using uh, blown rubber. So their blown rubber is that red stuff is what you can see there. And the white stuff is exposed foam. They've got a big cavity in the bottom of the shoe there where you can see the exposed wave plate. Uh, I haven't caught any rocks or anything in that at, as yet. Uh, but this blown rubber, so in the dry, grip is fine. In the wet, this shoe gets quite slippery. So on a, on a greasy, greasy road, uh, this shoe turns into an ice skate. So you better be wary about that one. But durability looks okay in this one as well. Right, and in our riding performance, so Boston 12. So with this huge slab of Light Strike Pro that you're going to find under the forefoot, that kicks into gear when you are picking up the pace in this shoe. So uh, if you're just going to jog around in this shoe, it feels quite normal and traditional. It certainly does lack wow factor. Like it doesn't have a, an aggressive rocker that's giving you much assistance. As I said, the ride feels pretty traditional. Um, and But uh, saying that though, this EVA still does a great job at protecting you from the road and it, it's quite soft. So if you're jogging around in this shoe, it feels soft, but it really does come alive and you get the most out of this Light Strike Pro once you start to put a little bit of pace in the shoe. Uh, now, again, it doesn't have much wow factor, but it has got enough to get you through those really um, long and those snappy training runs. So really, really good at tempo pace for me and uh, the long run as well where this one shines. So, but yeah, it also is a very, very consistent ride. I wouldn't call it overly soft. I would call it somewhere in the middle and responsiveness doesn't feel super responsive jogging, but as I said, it comes alive as you pick the pace up. Stability wise, I don't find it unstable at all. It's pretty good for me. And the ride of the Flash 2, so we've got a really different running experience here than the Boston 12. However, it's still a really versatile shoe. So very comfortable at all speeds. So pretty much anything that you can throw at it. Uh, but what you're going to find here with this big uh, crazy geometry, so with all the midsole here in the middle and this aggressive rocker, you're going to find it really nice and bouncy and soft through the middle. And then you're going to have a really nice roll forward and the legs are just going to tick over quite effortlessly. But it feels nothing like a traditional running shoe. If you're after that, you better stick clear of this one. It's a really fun, really fun experience, uh, running experience. Yeah, it's just... 
nice and bouncy off the middle, nice easy roll forward, and then you just pop off. So it feels great to jog around in and quite capable of picking up the pace as well. Uh, in the stability department, this one is okay if you're on a straight road. However, it could get a little bit sketchy if you've got some U-turns or some corners or a bit of that uneven trail stuff. I probably wouldn't use it for that either. Right, so best shoes for both these shoes. So Boston 12, very, again, very versatile shoe. It's gonna be great for your daily miles. It's gonna last a long time. Uh, it's great for your tempo workout. So up to about that tempo pace, it probably struggles to be a race day shoe. Uh, and then it really shines on the long run. So this one, so if you've got those really long workouts or your long runs, this shoe is a great shoe for that. Uh, and with our Flash 2, so again, very versatile shoe, but I think this one's happy place is those tempo workouts, So, but still feels great to jog around in. I think because of the, the crazy geometry on it, you're not gonna want to jog in this shoe every single day, just because your foot's gonna work a little bit harder if it's not used to a shoe like this, but this one definitely shines on those tempo days, and you can use this one for a long run as well. Right, so just wrapping that up, two really great super trainers here, but both very, very different experiences. So in the Boston, you're gonna find, it's the more stable shoe, it's the safer shoe, it's the cheaper shoe, and it's probably gonna beat the Flash 2 on durability wise. So this is a pretty, a really, really safe, gutsy, sort of daily trainer that has got some really good performance features in it. And what you're gonna find in the Flash 2, say, it's, it's a little more unpredictable. You've got that crazy geometry, but the ride in this shoe is much more enjoyable than the Boston 12. So I know a lot of people like the ride in the Boston 12, but for me, there's no comparison in the ride here. I think this is such an enjoyable ride. However, it's more expensive and you can't use it for as many things as what you can in the Boston 12. Uh, if I could pick one for each department, so the best shoe for your daily miles, I'm definitely gonna go with the Boston. The best shoe for your workouts, I'm gonna go for the Flash. The best shoe for your long runs, I think I'm gonna go to the Boston and that's just because it's a little more of a safer shoe. So what are you looking for in your shoe? So hopefully that clears a few things up with these two shoes. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And again, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.